on to talking about Havana syndrome. I think this will make up uh, most of what I'm talking about on today's show. This was spurred most recently by the CBS report uh, by Andrea Mitchell, Mitchell and Ken Delinian. Uh, so it just absolutely reads of deep state. Uh, but anyways, uh, the, the title of the report is seized by some invisible hand, what it feels like to have Havana syndrome. And this article goes through and basically details uh, the, the, I think the story of three people, uh, one being Trina Onifer and then one other woman and her husband who claimed that they were the victims of Havana syndrome in Cuba, this would be during the initial bout of Havana syndrome. I know there's been uh, several iterations of it around the world since, but uh, where they claim that these people claim that they were actually retired uh, from their positions in the Foreign Service or, you know, with the U.S. intelligence community uh, because of the injuries that they suffered. Now, in this article... It never says and explicitly says it cannot even conclude. They cannot conclude that Havana syndrome is a real thing. But nonetheless, you know, the title just outright says that it's happening. And so uh, uh, the other two, the the woman and her husband are Kate Fergus, uh, Kate and Doug Ferguson. So our Kate husband and Doug Fer Ferguson, her husband isn't. Yeah. All right. So that was a little confusing. Anyways, um, this whole thing starts in December of 2016. And it's exactly unclear to me if uh, and who these people are are actually in this story, because there's like, you know, you, you find out the details without names and then you have this NBC report that actually doesn't do a great job of breaking the whole thing down and uh, explaining like, you know, when they were infected and all that. But um, basically what, what they are claiming here is that they were in December of 2016, the first reports of somebody uh, they were, I think in a room experienced some sort of loud noise, felt really bad, nauseous, uh, it had symptoms like that. And then a couple weeks later, uh, they, they claimed that, you know, the, the symptoms got a little bit more serious. And then, uh, in February, 2017, this happens again, the U S embassy staff then instructs, uh, you know, like says, Hey, is anybody else experiencing these symptoms? Now, what, what are these symptoms? This is very important. Uh, uh, th this is uh, things like having headaches, being nauseous, feeling dizzy, uh, blurred vision, uh, essentially all things that would go along uh, with um, migraines, having migraines. I've had migraines. I, I had them worse when I was a kid. I still have them still a uh, less frequently as an adult and you know they can absolutely be debilitating and some of the things that they describe you know seem migraine-ish to me uh not that that's the only explanation for these symptoms it could be other things going on it could even be like allergies or something like that uh but anyways uh in 2017, it was attributed to a noise that these people claim that what was, you know, being played in their room. Uh, although when you look at the NBC story now, they kind of portray it all as microwave attacks. But at the time, they were really all focused on this being uh, some kind of sonic weapon or something like that. And actually in 2017, October 13th of 2017, the AP got a recording of what they alleged were the this noises being made in the attack and in 2019 there are two reports one analyzed by uh, a new york times expert and then the other one by the csh uh, laboratory and they both report uh, that th this was caused by crickets and actually in the chs laboratory they did an experiment where they were able to almost completely replicate uh, the noises or the sound patterns from the the ap recording uh by playing these uh cricket noises on speakers in a room so clearly whatever was happening here it, it was being caused by the noises of these crickets now there's a you know a couple explanations that come out at the time one is that you know like people were being maybe subject to some kind of sonic weapon or 
that this was essentially a, a psychosomatic thing where, you know, because you're told to look out for feeling nauseous, having headaches and stuff like that, and these are such common symptoms, you can find a time uh, where you feel like you're experiencing this. And so then you have, I think, a couple dozen people in total in Havana uh, come down with uh, quote unquote Havana syndrome in 2017. Now, one thing I want to point out that's very important to this whole thing and part of the narrative that has now completely been dropped. And that is that this was used by the Trump administration to undo Barack Obama's detente with Cuba. This was a very important move that Barack Obama had made, very bold, important. And what the Trump administration did was seized upon these vague reports and cases to claim that either Cuba was unable to defend America from whatever attacks were happening, couldn't really specify them, or that they were, you know, involved in the plot against them. Either way, we have to get our, and Cuba isn't acting in good faith. And this actually is what leads to the cycle of the Trump administration uh, removing and going back on Obama's detente, including, uh, like, removing the, the huge amount of... Um, travel that was going not i guess huge is the wrong way to describe but there was a lot a good amount of travel that was going on between the u.s and cuba you know cruise ships and everything going there trump administration really cut back on that that starts all with this now in 2018 it starts to bubble up again but this time it's being spun as this is some kind of russian weapon and the u.s and particularly the trump administration the cia led by gina haspel isn't taking it seriously enough because um b b because the, you know trump is a slave to russia and in fact there's this uh gq article that comes out uh on october 20th i believe this is in in 2018 where they, they take one u.s a guy who i think claims he was tied to the cia right and he says that i think he's in russia pulls up to a, a stop sign or a stoplight he's sitting there his kid starts to cry he gets this terrible headache unlike everything he's ever felt in his life he thought he was about to die and then within a couple hours like he's going out drinking going on trains and it's absolutely fine and at the time, the the reaction from the U.S. government, the Trump administration was, you know, we don't think this guy experienced Savannah syndrome, but he claimed he did. He went and talked to the press and the press actually pushed this over uh you know, over the, the thing. Now, Alan McLeod debunks this in an absolutely fantastic article, uh, and I'm hoping to have him on the show soon to talk about this in more detail. We'll spend like a whole hour breaking it down because it definitely deserves more time. I think it's going to be a real feature of the Biden administration, something we're going to have to deal with uh, for, the, for the years to come. Now, then, let, let's see. I guess we should talk about this BuzzFeed article on the CDC report first, because I think this is a little bit of an older story here. And this um, this says that medical records can't explain Havana syndrome, a buried CDC report says. And this is coming out at the time. So during 2018, uh, there's reports from are there's reporting from the CIA that Gina Haspel wasn't taking this seriously, that the CIA wasn't looking into it more, that they didn't think it was a real thing. And also there was, oh, this is a 2019 CDC report uh, that was uh, obtained by uh, BuzzFeed uh, that goes through and basically says that the, the CDC doesn't see a reason to study this further. Um, oh, okay. The, yeah, this was from 2018 in the Cuba Unexplained Events investigation. It was buried in a report that BuzzFeed got in 2019. And so, you know, this doesn't even come out as it actually is. Uh, but one of the things that the CDC report points out, and what actually a, a listener came back to me with last time there, he said, uh -uh, Kyle, you're wrong. This event syndrome thing is real because there's reports that people got brain trauma or brain damage that resembled um concussions is what they say now the important thing uh that the cdc report 
shows is that there there's no light before to compare it to and so you can't say it happened for that reason you know somebody could hit their head drain too much you, you know there's a lot of explanations for somebody how somebody could have some brain trauma and and so you can't just say oh this person has brain trauma they experienced this in havana ipso facto that you know this is havana syndrome and that's what the cdc points out they also say that based on the uh time period in which like the questions were asked so like a couple years after the alleged cases of uh havana syndrome happened you know asking people to describe their mental decline uh two years ago is a very vague and hard thing to ask people to do based on how memory works and everything like that and so people are actually kind of bad at describing their mental decline and so there's no real way to have any data to show that this is this is at all a thing and that's you know what the cdc points out here and yet again this is what nbc is basing their recent reporting on are are people involved in this investigation this isn't even made clear in the nbc news article again in this article despite the title that very clearly states that havana syndrome is a real thing that people are suffering from the symptoms of it when you actually get into the article they make it very clear that they don't know if Havana syndrome is a real thing now let's see I guess it it made sense we could go ahead and talk about I I think the problem here and the mistakes that were made where when the U.S. initially in 2017 went to the State Department employees and was like hey is anybody experiencing these symptoms and since they were so vague it allows very easily uh, for everybody to say oh yeah I've experienced those things because everybody experiences those things right these are just common I don't know, you can't even call them like ailments or anything, but you know, just things that happen. People get headaches, people get nauseous, right? Like, you know, like you're in like a different kind of, of travel. You're in a, a really different environment if you go from like being very rural to very city or the other way. Uh, the noises that are made, like how loud crickets could be, is unbelievable for pe- people who haven't been in like a rural enough community to understand how loud crickets could be um and so i think that like plays a huge part in this and then and i said that this was going to happen on the show when the biden administration william burns came in as cia director they said we're going to really investigate this and we're asking everybody if they've had these symptoms and yes everybody's had these symptoms so, so now they've drummed up like 200 cases all over the world China, Moscow, Hong Kong, uh, Colombia, Vienna. And what do all these places have in common? It's very easy. Uh, Hanoi, right before Kamala Harris was there. This creates a very easy situation to drum up any kind of propaganda story you want. Want to cancel meeting with Iran in Vienna? Then, you know, you say the the diplomats there had Havana syndrome. You want to make Kamala Harris look like a hero? Four diplomats got Havana syndrome. Kamala Harris went to the country anyways. Uh, you know, you want to make Biden look tough. You say he's standing up to China or Russia on this because it's all fake. They don't know it, even vaguely what's causing this. They they say in the NBC article, it's a microwave weapon or an energy pulse weapon or a sonic weapon. These are all vastly different things that would great vastly different problems and and look and sound really really different and the fact that everybody is just like you know going along and and using all these crazy futuristic terms and believing in sci-fi it's driving the media cycle and it's going to allow america to adopt a more aggressive foreign policy against several countries now we also learned from buzzfeed recently and I think they obtained this report through FOIA uh, about a declassified State Department report says microwaves didn't cause Havana syndrome. And this is in 2018. Again, remember, this is by the State Department that was with the Trump administration using Havana syndrome in 2017 to destroy the U.S. relationship uh, with Cuba when they looked into this with their scientific advisor, Jason Board. Uh, they were able to discover that it 
it was actually crickets and it was likely psychogenic uh, mass psychology effects that played a role in this. And, and this is what they judged to be highly likely. And so any other time the U.S. intelligence community has even a moderate or low intelligence is reported by the mainstream media as fact and gospel. And this time when not only do you have the reporting from the CDC, but you also have it from the CIA and, inter and, and then verified in independent labs and experiments. And also it just made sense that this is the case where you talk about these vague symptoms that you you have evidence and proof here and the u.s mainstream media is choosing to ignore it, to pursue a conspiracy theory fiction in order to demonize russia and china one of the things in the nbc reporting is that it says that we don't know what actors is carrying this out adam schiff is getting in on this uh captain russiagate is big on this saying that it could be a multitude of enemies um and they actually pass and buy and signed into law the Havana ad to investigate this more. So this isn't going anywhere. And we have to be able to combat it. And they could use a lot of like, oh, trust the science kind of stuff. But when you actually look at what the scientists have said all this, it's completely anti-Havana syndrome existing. Uh, this is a fictional in, uh illness invented by the u.s deep state and pushed be by the u.s mainstream media at times in spite of the u.s uh deep state and it just to demonize our enemies and, and to drive propaganda to fit their overall narratives of you know hatred against the enemies right now all right so that that's all the stuff i had on havana syndrome again i want to do a little bit of a longer show on it coming up uh because i i think this is going to be talked about for for the coming years it's going to be a real problem we got to deal with all right